My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's Everyday Office video, I'm going to show where and why you use the selection pane in Microsoft PowerPoint. So as you can see here, I'm about to insert a diagram, right? Let's say that I insert a, a nice little uh, hexagon diagram like this one, and I click OK. And then I realize that I want to have a few things tiled behind this. So I might go to insert up at the top of my screen, go over here to my shapes and add maybe a couple of different rectangles, you know, rectangle there. Maybe this one is uh, sort of orange and then maybe another rectangle over here that is blue and another rectangle over here. And let's say that that one is, um, let's go green. Okay. Now, of course, these rectangles probably shouldn't cover up the diagram. So I use the send. So notice here on the drawing tools, the format tab, I can use the send backward. I always use the drop down menu here to go send to back. However, and I can do the same thing here, send to back and the same thing here, send to back. Now, at this point, it can get really tedious to properly select you know, notice here I'm clicked on the diagram, and so now it's difficult for me to click on to the rectangles that are behind the diagram, right? Now the ones that are overhanging down here below I can get to, but this one that's directly underneath the diagram, it's very difficult to manage. So how do I make that work for me? Well, what I'm going to do is go back up to the top of the screen here. And over on the far right hand side of the home ribbon is this arrange drop down menu. And this is where bring to front, send to back, things like that live. And right down here at the bottom is this thing that very few people actually open up called the selection pane. But when I go there, you'll notice it's very, very clear. There's rectangles four, five and six here. And when I click on four, it grabs the yellowish one, five grabs the bluish one, six grabs the greenish one. I can click here on the content placeholder and it grabs the diagram and I can click on title and it grabs the title. I can go even a step further than this. I can click on rectangle four right here and I'm going to just double click on it. And now I can rename this from rectangle four to something like first rectangle. And same thing goes for rectangle five. I'll say this is the second rectangle and you could call them by name. Um, you can call them by what the content of these rectangles are, what the color, etc. To make it easier for you to go back and remember what the heck these things are. But now once you've got these available, you can click on to them and now when you want to change this first rectangle's color by clicking on it here, I can now choose to fill it differently, maybe with black. And you see how fast and easy it was to make that switch. I can click on my second rectangle, hit my little drop down menu here, switch the color up. And it's this way that I can get back to those things that are overlapped on a regular basis. It can be really frustrating to try to click things behind text boxes. You always seem to get the text box and you never seem to get the shape you want. So with the selection pane on the arrange drop down menu, choosing selection pane, you can get access to those elements and you can name them for future use.